All right, On1360 released their synchronization application yesterday. Should you get it? Here's the honest review. Welcome to Free Will Photos. If you're new here, we're a photo editing channel that teaches beginner photographers how to use photo editing software so that way you can create the images that you're looking to make. If that's something you're interested in, go ahead and smash the subscribe button and then hit the bell icon so that way you get notified of any new videos that are released. So today's video, we're going to be looking at the On1360 and this is really just an initial review. I'll go ahead and give you a spoiler alert. There are a lot of things missing in this version. I'm going to cover the pros because there's a lot of cons. There's a lot to be desired for in this program. The first thing is the synchronization between photos from your computer, which is where you'll probably be doing most of your editing, to your mobile device. It does work uh, not perfectly, and we'll get into that in a little bit. But uh, the plans that are up, the the plans that are available for this the one terabyte or the 200 gigabyte plan depend on how you use your uh, mobile storage and how you want to use the cloud these are probably a pretty good price point seeing as how it's a one-time fee for the year they do have monthly options if you want to pay the monthly uh, rate which you know for the uh, 200 gigabyte plan for the monthly bill it's six dollars a month and it's ten dollars a month if you go with the one terabyte plan uh, all of those, I think, are doable in 2020 and beyond. Uh, if you want mobile storage, seeing as how there's not that many companies out there that are doing the mobile storage and photo editing, this is probably uh, a good opportunity for anyone who's looking to get into it and doesn't want to pay $20 a month uh, as Adobe Lightroom charges. This is a good application if you're looking to cull your photos. Uh, and for those of you who don't know what culling is, it's a way of selecting your photos of the ones you want to keep versus the ones you don't want to keep. My recommendation is after you cull the photos that you remove them from the 360 cloud so that way you're not taking up unnecessary space with images that you don't plan to do anything with. This is probably a good practice for any mobile or cloud-based service because you know, we have tons of hard drives, more or less, or more or less, uh, at our main workplace, and then hopefully some backups offsite. Keep only the ones that you're going to be using. So you call them, and then you go back to your main computer and you remove them from the 360 application. This is going to help with uh, your storage, especially if you're using that 200 gigabyte plan. This app is good if you're doing basic edits on the fly, but there's some limitations here. So I want to be very clear in the way that I articulate this. There are some really cool features that on one camera raw 2020 desktop application actually allows you to do. Uh, I think that they missed a lot of those features in this uh, initial update. But if you just want to change a little bit of the tone, uh, globally, might I add, then yeah, you can go ahead and use on one uh, 360 mobile and you'll be all right. Uh, and then sharing to social media, because it's on your phone, you can export the information from your phone straight into your camera roll or to your gallery and then go into the social media application of your choice and then upload it, send it off. It's good to go. I don't recommend you doing it directly from the actual on one mobile application there's some limitations to that and i think that you're better off doing it native in whatever application you want to post to straight from your camera roll off into the cons the very first thing that i want to bring up and this is a big feature is it's missing masking options you can't mask your adjustments to just specific areas uh, the lack of local adjustment ability, I use an iPad Pro and on the iPad Pro, there's pressure sensitivity and I like to be able to paint in my mask and feather it the way that I want it to be. And I can do that with Lightroom. Uh, I thought that I would be able to do that with on one mobile and that is not the case. So it makes it for me unusable because all I can do is global adjustments with the limited filters that they've given us and then the tone filters or the tone, uh, you know, exposure, 
contrast, highlights, midtone, shadows, all those things. Those are all global and global adjustments are good if I want to edit the overall photo, but usually there's going to be some sort of dynamic range that exists in your photo and you're going to want to bring up some of the shadows in one area where the shadows are perfectly fine in the other. But because they don't have the local adjustments or masking features, and if they do, and I'm just missing it, please, somebody drop that in the comments below. Uh, but nonetheless, you can't do any of your local adjustments. AI in this, <laughs> I don't even know why they put it. And I'm not trying to be mean because I do enjoy the AI features that are inside of the, uh, the desktop application. But this version of the AI does not do anything. I don't believe it's worth even having in the application as a whole. They should just get rid of it uh, or do a lot more testing. They need to do a lot more beta testing and they probably should have released the overall application to people, especially those who signed up early. They should have, they should have released it to us uh, that are going to be using it and said, hey, give us some feedback. Uh, especially when it comes to that AI, because that AI, it just does not work very well. You can try it out for yourself, but it's not a very good tool. The adjustments, there are uh, filters in the desktop application version that there are adjustments you should be able to make inside of on one. And then it filters over to your desk or to your mobile application, but it doesn't. The two main adjustment layers that I use are the curves filter and the dynamic contrast filter. Uh, on almost every one of my images, I have both of those filters in some capacity. Because that's not in the mobile version of the application, I can't open any of those files that I synchronized on on One360 uh, on the mobile application. That's a big deal for me because that's where a lot of my style comes from when I get those punchy contrasty images, but they also have mass on them because I don't put the contrast all over the image. I put it in certain areas. So, you know, it, it's, it's really limiting. This app is extremely limiting when it comes to the creative flow for me. The next feature is more of just, you know, a navigation or an operational thing which is resetting the faders. There is a global reset for each one of the adjustments that if you push the little arrow, it will reset every single fader, which, you know, that could be fine if that's what you want to do, but I'm not a fan of that. What I would prefer to be able to do is double tap on the name and then that goes back to its default setting. What you have to do is manually pull it to the default setting. Not all of the faders or sliders start at zero, uh, some of them are in the middle and to get back to that middle point, you know, that's a little bit more challenging, I think. Maybe I'm just making that up for myself. Let me know in the comment section below if you struggle with getting stuff back to the default setting manually. So I've already mentioned this before, but this is a big deal for me again, is the curves adjustment. Uh, I don't know why there isn't a curves adjustment because Snapseed and Adobe Lightroom Mobile both have curves adjustments. It's a stylistic approach. It's so important for a photographer who wants to develop those tones to have a curves adjustment. But it's not there. I don't know why they got rid of it. The other thing that they're missing is a histogram. Now, this I really don't understand because the developers, they made this program for global adjustments primarily, but they didn't look at it and say, you know what? Maybe we should give them a histogram so they can see if they're blowing out their highlights or if they're making their darks way too, or I'm sorry, making their, their blacks way too dark and they're clipping on either end of the tonal range because they're making global adjustments everywhere and when you when you expand on your contrast that spreads your histogram the values that you have between the lightest and the darkest tones in the image on your midtones that moves your midtones over like you're making all these global adjustments but you have no way of seeing that represented uh in a in, in a graphical manner you can look at the image 
but there's no clipping uh, icons that say, "Hey, you're you're peaking in your uh, in your shadows or in your highlights." All you get is the slider, and then you look at the image and hope that you didn't go uh, past the pure white or the pure black. Genuinely, it's unacceptable. Uh, if you are going to charge people, you know, and I guess the the mobile app is free. You're charging me for me to really be able to use this mobile app. I'm paying you know, a hundred dollars a year if I get the one terabyte plan, which that's what I got. You're telling me that I can't even edit the photos the way that I want to on the fly. So I I don't know why someone thought that was a good idea to not release this with a histogram. So whatever, for whatever reason, you have to search around for the import button for your photos when you're looking to import from your camera roll or your gallery. You have to click these three little dots and then there's a import feature there. I don't know why they would hide that behind three little dots. That just seems like a very bad user interface design. Uh, it should have been something that's very obvious. This is a photo editing app and I need to get my photos into the application so I can edit them. So you should make it as seamless and simple as possible for me to get my images right into the application so I can start my editing process. But if I have to, if, if I open the app and I'm like, hmm, how do I import my pictures so I can update this app? That is probably not going to be beneficial, right? I, I don't know who thought that was a good idea. But nonetheless, and honestly, at this point, the, the, the program is so unusable that I probably wouldn't even, I'm, I'm, I'm going to use it for a week, but I'm not going to use it long term. And I'm definitely not getting rid of Lightroom Mobile. Uh, Lightroom Mobile just has way more user uh, functionality for, for me, is that it's missing features for portraits. So if you're a portrait photographer, you're not going to be able to do any blemish removal, right? The healing brush or the clone stamp tool, things like that don't exist in the mobile version. I don't think they thought this through. I think they released a, a version that they've been working on and they didn't say, okay, do we have the tools that creators really need, that photographers really need to be successful. And the, because if they had asked that, then the answer would have been no. We're missing a lot of the key component things. And this is one of those things that they're missing for photographers that shoot portraits primarily. Like you are not going to be able to edit your portraits uh, selectively. You're going to have to do global edits and you're not going to be able to do any blemish removal. So, for you, the on one mobile app is probably not even a good idea. Now there's some workarounds. You can uh, do all your blemish removal in Adobe Lightroom or in Snapseed and then send that into on one mobile. But if you're already in a great app like Snapseed or on one, I'm sorry, uh, Adobe Lightroom mobile, what's the point in bringing it into on one? I just don't see it. Like, I just don't see it. Here's the deal. Should you get it, right? This is this is the question. And comment down below if you di completely disagree with what I'm saying here, or if you do agree. But right now, I don't think that the value for what they put out is actually worth it. What you're paying for with the 360 uh, program is really just cloud storage. And there's cloud storage at a cheaper cost if you go through iCloud, Dropbox, like you can get storage capacity at a greater value uh, than what you're getting with the 360 application. I am optimistic, however, because this is all software driven, they can just release more and more updates uh, to make the software better. And I think that's what we're gonna see over the next year and, and moving into the future. But the problem is, a lot of the features that they're going to be adding are going to be features that should have been in the program to begin with. So we're not going to see too much innovativeness, or I don't know if that's a word, 
it, it, it's not going to be as innovative as photo sh- or Lightroom is getting with some of their selective hue adjustments. <laughs> some of the filters that are in Snapseed, as, as cheesy as they are, uh, are more innovative than what you have available to you as a creator inside of the On One mobile app. So I look forward to seeing what they're going to do in the future. I did purchase for the one year. Uh, and if they don't enhance the the user capability, I'm not going to purchase this again in 2021. I'm just going to say, you know what? Adobe Lightroom is where my money is best spent because their program just works better for me, especially if I'm out in the field and want to go edit photos uh, while I'm sitting on the couch. I can edit them uh, the way that I would normally look to do it on a computer, uh, minus some features. But the desktop application with On One is just so amazing that I'm kind of bummed out that they didn't transfer that very well to their mobile application. Should you get it? Nah, you know what? Right now, I don't think anyone should get it. It is not worth the dollar amount that you're paying. It, it just really isn't. Uh, I wouldn't invest the money right now. There's my thoughts. Let me know what you're thinking in, in the comment section below. Again, if you're new here, Free Will Photos is all about teaching people how to do photo editing so that way you can create the things that you want to create. If that's something you're interested in, go ahead and smash that subscribe button and hit the bell icon so that way you get notifications. Till next time, stay inspired and keep creating.